Hello and welcome to the Animation Communication Podcast, your source for discussion about animation, film, fandom, and more. So please join our host, I Love Kim Possible a Lot, or KP, and Riddle of Lightning, Real or Josh, for today's discussion. If you like what you hear, please remember to show support by giving a like, follow, as well as subscribing to the main I Love Kim Possible a Lot channel on YouTube. Spread the word, and thank you for being part of our community. This episode contains some mild adult language. So welcome everyone to our new format of animation communication. So not everything is all set up graphic design wise, but we're in the transition of getting our new co-host because if you're not following the Twitter or the Twitter stuff in general, um, the thing that Lauren was working on, well, besides she had a hardship thing too, but the good thing that Lauren was working on is she got a job at DreamWorks, so she's actually doing that full time right now, and she doesn't she doesn't have any more time for the podcast, or at least at this point. So she can she'll probably like come in and out, but as it is, like starting a new job, especially a big studio job, is um stressful. So I'm sure we'll be able to hear it from her at some point and hear what it is to like work at DreamWorks and stuff like that. But for right now, she just started, and I'm not going to bother her about it. So anyway. So she just got a job at DreamWorks, so um, we're transitioning to our new co-host. Um, oh, yeah, my other thing. You'll hear from Lauren relatively soon. She's going to record a little, like, goodbye outro thing. We're still friends. There's nothing, like, gross behind-the-scenes drama going on or anything like that. But, you know, it's just a natural adult transition and things like that. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce... Uh, Riddle, who, um, his username is Riddle of Lightning, I don't know, um, he's active on Twitter, and I've known Riddle for a really long time, probably like at least three years at this point or something like that, um, and he's just a really nice person, and he's also funny, and, uh, that's why I thought he'd be a good, uh, podcast co-host, plus he just also knows the industry, uh, pretty well too, um, even though he, even though he kind of goes more on the gaming aspects than anything, but, you know, so Riddle, how are how are you? Hello, I am Riddle. Um, first off, I want to thank Lauren and and congratulate Lauren. Um, she, she was a very good co-host, and I'm honored to be here. Just just trying to fill in her shoes. I don't know how well I'm going to do. Um, yes, I do animation, and um, um, I'm yeah, I'm just active on Twitter. Um, we just know each other through association, and we do cons together. Um, KP and I. Um, not a whole lot. We don't have like a, a long, long history, but I, I, we seem to get along well enough. Um, we, we tolerate each other. We tolerate each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you, oh. oh, I was going to ask, do you remember how we met? Cause I remember, I was going to see if you remember. Yes. Through the, the, through the server itself. And I just made, um, silly drawings and that was, that was my way to communicate basically because I was very ultra shy. And somehow that stuck around, and I, I stuck around for this long. You did it. So usually, I mean, we have a fan Discord server. We're just in the process of start or restarting um, game nights on Fridays. If anyone is interested, that is an open public server. It's not a Patreon exclusive. I don't have a Patreon of this recording, so or anything. So it's it's open to the public. Soon. Soon. May, maybe soon. Um, so you know, uh, it's open to the public. You know, um, I. I'm I bop in there, but I'm not super active in there, obviously, because there's a lot of people in there, and they all want my. Oh, sometimes they want my individual attention. But anyway, Riddle's there, and he's a mod in there, and you can say hi to Riddle, and usually Riddle will say hi back. But Riddle um, makes these little funny doodles um, that he whips out really fast, and they're really like funny meme doodles. So a lot of times I'd be like, "Hey, I'm sad." someone make me a doodle and then riddle would just make me a doodle in like a half an hour and it'd be really funny so um yes. that's kind of how he that's kind of his shtick um is yep. his riddle doodles so if you've been paying attention to the new um kp content in general i hope you are because we still work hard we're still here um <laughs> we're still here um uh, the majority of the fan art these days because i don't get a lot of new consistent fan art you know if you want to do fan art you know uh, we will highlight it. Uh, please feel free to do a fan art if you want to. But anyway, we don't get a lot of consistent um, fan art, especially if we're doing like a week. If we do like an upload and then uh, the upload that uh, an upload the next week, we're kind of like we try to do bi weekly updates or or things. 
And so, like, you know, four out of five drawings, usually riddle drawings, based on our private conversations or just things that are happening on Twitter. Go ahead, Riddle. I know you want to say a thing. Oh, yeah. That, that's that's basically I just capture the moment, and that's what I do. Um, it's, 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 I'm, I'm not very good at, like, just, just communication in general. Um, so we're going to see how well this goes. So how I usually try to communicate how things are going on is through drawing. And I'm not very good at drawing. I've I've tried it for a, for a while to do quality work. Everyone had their deviant art phase, and I tried to do mine. You know, just do drawings of things that I want to do, OCs and stuff. But then I found out that you can get more attention by doing other people's ideas and other people's um, like original characters or they themselves. So in order to gauge with people, you try to you know draw them and the situations that are going on. And that's just how I figure out how to engage with people is through it's through art, and uh, and by not putting in a lot of effort, you can put out these um, pieces of work very quickly, um, which I, I find um, success in because I I can't draw very well, <laughs> but I can draw a lot and I can draw fast, and so and so I guess um, it all harkens back to animation, um, trying to like reduce styles into ways that are recognizable. But um, I don't know their own stylistic ways mm-hmm. because because when you animate you don't want to have something super complicated shaded you know you, because if you go on frame by frame it's gonna it's you you're just gonna just give yourself a hard time so you try to reduce ideas and concepts into basic shapes and stuff like that um, kind of rambling. No, no, I mean it's a it's a podcast about animation, so you're you're good, my dude. But... Oh, thank goodness. You know, oh no, it's it's a podcast about Karens. We tricked you. We we tricked you. We're too we're too smarts. <laughs> too too smarts of a of a brain cell. So um, yeah. So Riddle does some basic animation. He knows animation principles. I would just want to say like Riddle, if you like want me to, I I believe you could you could become a good artist, but you know like you'd have to practice and stuff like that. And I don't know if I you're don't at the do point. Hard work. I don't yeah, wanna. that's that's my like. You have the potential. I'm, is I'm saying I believe in you, but I don't like. It's a lot of life drawing. It's a lot of drawing naked people and practicing that. So it, some people are up to it and some people aren't. But like, if you want to enter the industry, then you have to tr- practice drawing naked people, or else you know, you're it's gonna be hard to market yourself as an artist. So, um, but if you're just doing doodles online or you're just doing your own thing, then you know, if if that helps you, you know, express yourself, but just go yeah, go I'm do def- it. I am definitely an outside artist, self trained um, and self taught. There's the there's there's two different fields. There's inside and outside. The inside is probably you. You're traditionally trained. You do you do naked bodies. You do the whole the, your fundamentals and stuff. Me, I'm definitely an outside artist, self-taught, self-trained, and there there is a market for for self-taught artists out there. Um, it's it's not going to be like a professional track, but it's just it's just something that I like to do. I don't I don't I don't see myself sitting down. And drawing for eight hours each day to to, 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 to to buy me sandwiches and pizza rolls. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, if you're not trying to do, if you're not trying to set a, or fit into a pre-established mold, then you know, it just reminds me of the. It just reminds me of people who do art for the sake of like, you know, they're businessmen, but they paint. And like, fun fact, uh, Jim Carrey, uh, the actor, is also a famous like side artist, and he's like a really like deep insightful person if you hear interviews but people don't like really research that sometimes they just see Jim Carrey like oh he's Ace Ventura oh meme but um that's just an example of doing art as a hobby um on the side just for funsies so Riddle does art just for funsies um, yes my main job is factory work I am <laughs> this is what I do right now so um yeah you work you what do you tell the people what you do specifically you build boring well, things right <laughs> I build machines that convert um, um, AC to DC. It's it's basically a transformer, and then we we pump those that direct current through a very low conductive material. And when you conduct push um, a high DC voltage through low conductive material, it creates heat, and we use that heat to cook things that can't be brought into an industrial oven for heat treating. Because um, if you have something out in the field, you can't, or on a shipyard, or something that's already situated in place, you can't really remove it from its setting to get it into like a, They have these industrial ovens, first of all. First of all, 
in order to heat treat things. And if you, if you can't move it, then you have to bring the, the equipment to the area and insulate it off and cook it there. That's what I do. I build machines that can do that. So what kind of thing, like, from what you've described in the past, it's about, like, transferring and building, like, um, things to transport oil, right? Like, underground and fun, science things? A, we do a lot of... Um, Anything that is a pipe that you don't want it to leak, and you know, oil is one of the things you don't want to leak, or else you cause an environmental disaster. <laughs> and it's a what could possibly with... go wrong? Yeah, it's it's a, it's a problem with with um, oil pipelines them not taking the proper steps in order to make sure that they don't leak oil all over someone's reservation, or or just through wild land or in farms. At at like, but when it comes to, like the farmland, if you you drop a, a small amount of oil you can mix it into the soil and then it's sort of okay if it's not processed it, it's 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 very touchy okay but if you get if you get into water then you're just screwed yeah oil and water don't mix um don't famously mix. you yeah. can try real hard <laughs> yeah you don't want to get into the groundwater because it's going to stay in there forever so um riddle you you have a, a brony background so how did you get into brony stuff how did I get into brony stuff? Good question. Um, I think it was like a year after. Like I didn't get to go into immediately season one. I think it was around season two, or the hiatus between season one and season two that I got in. And it's just through fan memes that that caught my attention. Like, what is this? It's a meme. And then I, it's a I pony. Found out there was a whole whole community to buy it around it. And um, I I think my first introduction to the whole brony subculture and brony reviewing was through um, people like Tootsie Forever and then you. Um, I love Kim Possible a lot. It's me. It's you. <laughs> Thanks for the yep. plug. Yep. The, 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 the famous <laughs> plug on my bro- own show. <laughs> yes, we must plug you. you you're, you're very... We, we got to make sure our, our, our host is plugged. Mom, tell me I'm pr- you're proud of me. <laughs> me um yeah i didn't i don't know tootsie was doing brony stuff like that long tootsie's like a friend of riddles who's who's nice yes yeah but um so and then how did you kind of start integrating yourself into the fan culture did you just did you go to conventions first or did you join like discord wasn't around um in 2012 so did you join like skype groups or how did it was it was the ancient days of skype and aim First was AIM, but AIM wasn't around during the brownie times. Um, but but the fort times. It, yeah, yeah, the dark times. But I think, yeah, it was mostly Skype and, and or DeviantArt that were the big brony areas. And then the, the YouTube scene. But you couldn't really interact through YouTube. Like, comments sucked. Um, comments still kind of suck. They, 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 they suck now, but... At a period of time, they they you can actually get a comment. You'd be able to read it. You'd have you'd have um, direct messages back back in the day on YouTube. You'd be able to directly message content creators and stuff and have conversations with them if you can believe it through YouTube. Yeah, uh, they they got rid of that feature like years ago, obviously, because you know, I mean, I you I think what they have now is much better. Where basically, if you want to contact a person for business stuff, then you can like go to their about page and get an email from there. But uh, as far as randos, you know, I think it's a general rule that content creators just kind of don't um, engage with randos on a private level unless they, you know, they they it's another right. mutual or something like that. Like because people get right. burned that way. Like I've gotten burned that way of people just like. How dare you just treat me like a fan? Or how dare you call me a fan? I'm an individual, and I I reach out to you because you're an individual. And you know, like we've talked, we've had a whole podcast um, before about like how YouTube isn't a shopping ground for your own personal friends. You know, people are either doing it as a business or they're doing it as a really passionate thing. And like we're we're a little of both, mostly the passion thing. Right. So you know, um, yeah. it it can be. Go ahead, Riddle. Sorry. Well, I'm just going to say I'm in the opposite camp. I, um, I I remember a time when YouTube was a social media site where you could make friends. There were things called YouTube friends, and you'd be able to see each other's feeds. And that, that was like the, 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 the genesis for me when it came to um, interacting with other humans online was through humans. YouTube. And we would have like viewing rooms. Back in the day, you were able to have like group rooms where you could all 
stream YouTube videos and you watch them together and request one video after another and you have a chat room. Um, and th that, that is one of the, 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 one of my first interactions with people online. I think it was okay. Uh, it's not for like the, the, the professionals, you know, it's, it's for the, the small users that just want to, you know, they just want to vibe and they want to make friends that have similar interests or similar tastes and things like anime was really niche back in like 2008 um, when it came to like online stuff and it was, it was blowing up um, like in like in that that, that time period. I, I'm a bit older than you. so. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Riddles. And well, can I say are you am I allowed to say? Yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 32. You're yeah. So Riddle's a little older than me and he's also probably been in the well. Yeah, I I mean I've always kind of been online, but I I was mostly lurking and I didn't really start posting my art in high school, but my art I'm using air quotes even though you can't see them cuz we're doing a podcast, but um I see a, them. a lot of my high school art is really bad and I if if I've been like like I use my DeviantArt as a dumping ground, not really a professional like portfolio site now. Um that's one of the reasons I'm going back to school is to basically get my shit together and use that as a, but also use uh, the school's networking connections and all that stuff, you know. Um, I've talked oh, yeah. about that before as far as I, I just get super depressed and super unmotivated to do stuff if I'm just doing it on my own and it's hard for me to structure. And then, like... But KP, just do it. Just just do it, you know. Like, I know how to do it. It's just also, like, I feel like, you know, it's such a, you know, a hard thing to get a job in animation if you're just doing it on your own and networking and stuff like that and that's why i'm just like if you can go to school you know go to school if you can't go to school here's all these other things like people do it you know people become better artists on their own and by like community things but it's just it's just less structured and it's very case by case individual by individual basis kind of thing but anyway i don't what was it we were we talking about riddle i forgot <laughs> I already forgot too, but um, <laughs> you were talking if, about. If... Um, oh yeah, I was talking about like being a lurker. So um, yeah, I lurked, um, you know, and I spent a lot of time on like TV tropes, and that's like my basic fundamental, like how I started analyzing media is through TV tropes. It's great if you haven't heard it. It's basically they break down like story story writing and story type archetypes and things that you know shows will do as points of comparison anyway that's also that was that's my fundamental thing so that's where a lot of my references that's why i can cross-reference things relatively easy is that's my background but anyway um yeah i lurked until like high school and then uh, i just did tra tra i did traditional art until like you know i want to say like relatively recently like two or three years ago i finally got a tablet and i was just like oh I wish I knew this. I wish I knew it was this easy. You just not a tablet. I had a tablet, but um, I had an iPad. So an iPad's much better because you can see. Like I had a traditional tablet, and it's hard. So this way, I can see what I'm doing as I do it, and I'm just like, it's a much easier transition. Oh, oh yes, Tra traditional tablets are the worst. I think yeah. I've I've tried them before. You 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 just gotta like guesstimate where you're at and it's 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 too much of a bother i'd rather use a mouse than a traditional tablet yeah so um you know i'm trying well anyway so anyway we're lurked or we we both lurked but i didn't really start you know becoming active on the internet until like um when i started making my content and you know doing tumblr blogs like a little bit before that but um yeah so yeah youtube was was a different beast back then huh Oh yeah, oh yeah. You could have friends, and that's that's how I first started networking was through YouTube. Um, I even had little animations back then. And back in like high school, I wasn't even on like internet. Like I came, I came from a background of very, um, I don't know if they're traditional, but more, um, I don't know what's the blue, what's blue the color? word for it. Not not blue collar. I think just just paranoid. That's the word. Paranoid. paranoid. <laughs> that's the word. Paranoid. <laughs> Yeah, I had I had very paranoid parents. Like you, you get on the internet, someone's gonna come into our house and abduct you. Um, so I had to wait until I was eighteen before I could. Uh, oh my god, I didn't know that. No, I was using the internet when I was a minor. It's just a matter of just being safe. But like, I think no, as far I, <laughs> no, my parents like no, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna ruin the computer by going on the internet. By the way, learn how to debug your computer because we ruined the computer. 
Like it, 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 that, <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> Um, I had to I had to learn tech stuff very early because my parents were unwilling to, but they wanted to abuse their computer for for un, for 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 reasons un, unknown to a, a child like me. Well, welcome to Riddle Tech Support. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> hello, welcome to the tech, the place with the tech. So, um, when did you start going? Because you were doing conventions before I came around, right? So. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I was. I was did, uh, Talk about I that. I was doing the yeah, I was doing the MS um the S N S P um conventions when it came to the brony stuff. But even before then I used to do anime cons back in Texas and um Illinois. Um I, I did small little circuit stuff, but it was it was it was more as a goer. I never like like was a was was a person hosting anything, but that was kind of my, my, my forte into the the community culture in real life and through through the anime stuff, I, I was open to, to the brony stuff and the brony stuff was okay, um, and it got, I was able to network with people. I actually got involved with the, the the My Little Pony collectible card game people, and I helped um, beta test some stuff when I was in its, its earlier stages, because I have a background in um, a, a lot of card game stuff. Card games are 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 are, are, are is is my drug. I love Magic well, the Gathering and Pokemon and stuff do, like that. Do you want to do you want to explain your your username? Yeah, Riddle of Lightning. It's it's based off of a, of a Magic the Gathering card. This, this is how much I'm into just card game stuff. Um, I love just doing the math and and trying to figure out how games work. Um, and 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 the the science behind fun. How do you make a game fun and interactive for for the people and then having a sense of enjoyment from from winning a game. This is the, like you, you can figure out how to win a game and the optimal strategy, but just trying to find a way to make a game fun is a different beast in itself, and I'm very interested in that portion of 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 game game making and 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 inter- interacting with the formats. Even today, I I still do Magic the Gathering, and I like to do a format called Cube, which is you you make a format, mm-hmm. and 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 it's more important. I think it's more important to figure out how to make a format. That is fun to play for all players, and not just who can find the winning strategy and and win, mm-hmm. because then you're just waiting to have the winner win, and that's not fun. Um, I was gonna ask um too, like, how did you like? How did you know you liked animation? Like, you know, you 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 mentioned anime. Oh, animation! Like, I I I was I was the the child that like the 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 the, the parents would put it for the TV and that's the babysitter. Mm-hmm. I grew up I grew up on a diet of of Fox Kids and Warner Brothers and PBS and then into Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Disney and like the the throughout the, in the 90s and 2000s cartoons, cartoons, cartoons. Um and th- that was and and was given Disney films and Disney movies. I grew up on all that stuff. So you were, yeah, okay, so you just, like, you were like me who just kind of came out, like, do you have a pref like, do you have a preference for animation? So, like, you just like the art part of it, or, you know, what's that science like in your brain? Oh, preference? Um, when growing up, I did not have a preference. Oh, okay. Um, grow- growing up in a family of, of two younger brothers and a younger sister, or four younger brothers, depending on where I was living at the time, um, I would... It was always a compromise between what everyone wanted to watch, so mm-hmm. I I was not allowed to give a say, but it would have to be something that everyone likes. So everyone likes SpongeBob, everyone loves Invader Zim, everyone loves like these 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 good cartoons on Nickelodeon and Disney and 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 Cartoon Network, and those were often showed. Um, I guess my question is like what. Like what draws you specifically to animation, like versus live action stuff? Oh, what draws me to animation over live action? Um, it's 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 a good medium. Um, I don't know why. I I I guess because I grew up with so much animation in my childhood, I don't see it as as a lesser format. I find it as a different format to convey stories. Um, there's there was some good i think there was some good cartoons back when i was a kid that conveyed stories and using animation like batman the anime series gargoyles um beast wars um the transformers beast wars i think like these 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 shows show that you can have like ser- like not 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 serialization i guess that wasn't really 
a thing back then. But you can have you, like big arcs and have the stories build on top. So yeah, that's sterilization. Yeah. You could use yeah. themes, and you can use you could use good story writing in 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 animation. And I guess that opened my eyes to this is not just a a children's format. This is something that um, everyone can enjoy. Yeah, Disney is like speaking of like gargoyles and some of the '90s stuff. Like Disney is behind the scenes. Like I can I can see that they're trying like super hard to um, make gargoyles more appealing. And even like recently, um, so a couple yeah, I, they, I they had I, like Star. They had Amphib. They, they had Amphibia, right? Yeah, Amphibia was Disney. Yeah, the Amphibia yep. just ended. Uh, I I I I need to rewatch Amphibia and I need to catch up on Owl House because everyone tells me how good Owl House is and I'm just like yep. one thing at a time. So um, even though we we have I've made videos on the Owl House before, like my my memory unless we've we spent a long time on a, a specific video, I'm just like okay, video's out. Gonna gonna cleanse my brain and move on to the next thing. So um, you. There's, there's... <laughs> There's too many series to watch without enough time. That is, yeah. that is that is the that is the curse. Yeah, not enough eyeball time. Um, but so um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to ask. Is there anything you would like to tell the the people listening to the podcast about yourself? Like and subscribe. Um, <laughs> Well, that's about it. If you got any questions, my DMs are open on Twitter, and I'm free to interact with anyone. Uh, this is this is I'm, I'm and chill. To, you know, like, and then the podcast goes viral, and then you get five thousand DMs, and you're just like, oh Good. no, what did I say? The, the 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 bigger the number, the more powerful I feel. <laughs> you just consume. I, oh, do you want to talk about your OC, your little OC man? He's he's an orange blob man. Um. Funny thing, it used to be a Son of the Hedgehog original character. I came from that dark depth of, of YouTube way back in the day. I came from the Sonic fandom and slowly over time has morphed into this 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 orange blob man because A, I don't want to draw that and B, um, I, I, I enjoy the, the reduction in stylization. I think it looks nice. Yeah, I, it, I, I agree. Yeah. So, but yeah, you, Riddle's actually a real person. I promise you. You know, so Riddle's also. I am, <laughs> I am real. I'm a real boy. Real boy. So, um, I was also going to ask. Um, now I forgot again. Oh, I was just going to say, like Riddle. Um, usually when I I'm trying to market myself to like every con ever. So you know, as I get booked for them. Um, you will hear them here or you'll hear them on social media, you know, follow all of my social media if you want to, um, to get updates about that kind of stuff. And just because it's fun, if I can, you know, to, to post about specific things and, you know, it, you know, it, it keeps, it keeps you in my life. Even if you're not, if I don't really know you, don't be creepy. Um, hashtag... I'm much less professional. I'll don't... just say hello. You'll just say hello. And then you'll go in your little riddle ball. But, um, <sighs> Yeah, um, what was I saying? Sorry, that's my turn of thought. Uh, that was the, the wrapping up the riddle section. Oh, okay, well, yeah, wrapping up riddle section. So I'm trying to think if there's... Oh, um, yeah, social media. So, you know, do the social... I don't know, cut this, cut this down, editor. I lost my train of thought, so... Choo -choo. Lola, choo-choo, ka -choo. So, um, what we wanted to do for this, the formatting of this podcast is kind of introduce Riddle first and then talk about some news stories since Riddle also consumes animation and knows about the, the industry. I'd say like, um, I'd say maybe not as well as Laura and I, but still like pretty close, um, as far as knowledge base, like Riddle, do you have the skill to be able to tell what voice actor is talking just by hearing their voice? Like, is that not, <laughs> is that no. a... Okay. <laughs> no. I mean, yes. Yes. If I know them. Um, okay. Like, you know, no, if I don't. So like, you know, how, how much, how much brain cells you, you use as you, you memorize like the voice ranges of the, like some very popular VAs like Jim Cummings and Tara Strong yep. and stuff like that. Yeah, and then yeah. you can pick like, them out and then you're just you like, can, Oh, my yeah. life is ruined. I can't <laughs> separate myself from this. Um, I can I can always pick out a Jim Cummings or a Tara Strong. I think anyone can, but I don't know. Like I, I try my best not to to engage myself in social media 
that much where I have to ruin my enjoyment because I know these, like, I know. What oh, right. Yeah. Together. Yeah. We've talked about, or I've talked about on the main channel before how, um, James Woods is kind of, um, like everyone loves him as Hades, but he says some pretty like oof things on Twitter sometimes. And I'm just yep, like, some Oh no. Oof things. <laughs> James yep, Woods. I, ha <laughs> I have to turn off my brain and enjoy the thing or else I have to be hypercritical and then I enjoy nothing. Yeah, so um, I remember what I was going to talk about. So, uh, so what happened uh, like last weekish is there was the twentieth anniversary of Kim Possible. So we were talking about gargoyles and how Disney is kind of doing these things where they market their older material, which I think is brilliant. Like I, like really work that nostalgia. I'm really, I'm really, pre like I've never worked for Disney. I mean, I wish, but like I'm really satisfied soon. with how soon TM. But I'm really satisfied with how Disney like just continues to to keep their their popular characters in the public eye i think that's one of their great strengths and i think that's very good for everyone involved that's why everyone gets mad when like lesser properties like atlantis and you know my beloved treasure planet don't get as marketed but you know i'm just like be glad in some level i'm just be like be glad snow white is still being marketed like that movie almost came out a hundred years ago like think about that you know right. they're the only company that really kind of does that so it's interesting now that disney plus is happening and how you know people can just consume content from any you know age range it's not so much based on like year and things like that so they're kind of marketing their older properties to see which one will stick to see what's best for disney plus so um you know one of the things that happened is like so disney owns abc i don't know if people know that but there you go you you know it so one of a the abc things is good morning america so they actually flew Christy and Will in, Christy Carlson Romano, Kim Possible, and Will Ferdell, Ron Stoppable. They have their own pod. They have two. Well, Christy has her own podcast called Vulnerables, and then Christy and Will have a podcast where they interview voice actors called I Hear Voices. Really, you get it? You, you, I get it. You get it. <laughs> so, um, which is kind of like us, but, um, you know, Will and Christy are actors, and we're more like, behind the scenes animation people so you know i like to, i mean i mean like our podcast is better but it's just kind of different even though we kind of interview similar uh groups of people as far as that stuff um please listen to all of our podcast episodes on the youtube and on itunes <laughs> yeah yeah we're just we're also um expanding to like a bunch of networks because i recently switched i don't know who, for people who care i recently switched to um this new uh, platform called apod which is free where soundcloud was not free as far as um the rss feed which is the distribution coding that sends it to like every podcast um hosting website except like the the big outliers like spotify and itunes and stuff like that and they're like you've been select you know you've been automatically put in to put, have your podcast put in these ones that are you didn't have them before and i'm like that's neat but i'm just glad i don't have to pay for soundcloud anymore for the podcast because that was the other thing i was paying for for youtube stuff and now i don't have to do it but anyway back to kim possible so they flew christy and will to ne to manhattan to do like a kim possible thing and kim possible daring on disney plus you know all four all four seasons so like you know i have my own ideas as far as like what kim possible should be what should be done with kim possible and i hope i just get to the door first before disney's like hey Let's do this. this. No, more like, it's more like a timing thing now, because, you know, they're sitting on Kim Possible, and they know Kim Possible has dated well, like, you know, the Proud family got a reboot, and I think Kim Possible has, you know... Why didn't they, why didn't they call you to bring out you out to ABC? I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm working on I'm working on it, so, you know, um, so I'm trying to, like, we'll see if I get there first before um, they just decide to do a, a continuation, but I think still, they're just still trying to feel it out, because... You know, the live action movie tanked because no one fucking wanted it. And no offense, but no one, this is not, you know, you could have asked me if if we should do a live action Kim Possible movie. And I'm just like, with the, a, a new universe, like, clean slate. And I'm just like, no, that's not, that's not what anyone wants. So um, they're trying to put some, you know, distance time-wise um, before they do a new Kim Possible thing, I think, is what's happening in, in behind the scenes. But anyway. They still, like, did, like, a happy, like, happy 20th Kim Possible anniversary, and they interviewed Will and Christy. And the cool thing is, um, 
Christy and Will, because of their podcast, they got um, they got the original creators, Bob and Mark, um, to be interviewed. Shout out to Mark because he follows me on Twitter. So he's 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 neat. I drew his dog one time, um, and he followed me on Twitter. I'm just like, yay, mom! I got I got, I caught one of the two Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah this is one of the things i do is you know you do art for people and that's how you somehow how you network with people <laughs> yeah i mean but my my art takes more time than yours riddle um you just, just just go fast just gotta go fast so anyway go um fast. um so they she interviewed bob like this is all on youtube um on the hear voices the the pod on her podcast she interviewed um bob and mark and then she interviewed nicole uh sullivan who voices shigo um, and she's, um, also Joan of Arc in Clone High, which is gonna come back soon. They're, they're working on it, so probably another year or two. Um, hashtag, you know, Clone High is really neat. We'll probably review that when it comes out. But anyway, um. Clone High, it's neat. It's neat. And a um, TM. Anyway, and then, um, they got John DiMaggio, who voices Draken, and then they, Bob and Mark wrote an original, like, cute little radio play script with all of the characters in there, and they all recorded it. And, like, some of the comments are just like, oh, man, I wish someone would animate this, and I'm just, like, stroking my beard, and I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not committing to anything on the internet, but, you know, that does have my name on it, you know essentially and it's something relatively easy to do like we've we've done more with less before so you know anyway so um but yeah it was really neat um and it made me very happy and it's not canon but my favorite thing in the whole wide world i was listening to it with michaela my um my roommate and my friend i've known since high school who's my roommate now um for for now she's actually gonna move in with her boyfriend uh, relatively soon while i still go back to school so Anyway, so I was listening to it with Michaela, and then, like, um, Ron has the line, well, Ron has the line, um, where he's, like, Draken and Shigo, he's like, you guys are still together? And I'm just, like, like, I just blanked out, and, you know, I'm just like, I can't believe it! The shipping. Shipping. shipping is real. Well, because it's not really, it was highly implied at the end of, I mean, spoilers for Film Possible, but it was highly implied at the end of the show, but they never, like, they had, they never said it! Keep up. They never said it, and um, now they said it, and, like, she goes responses like, oh, it didn't work out because we have a shipping name, and I don't like the shipping name, which I thought was, like, a cute, like, little fan thing because no one, no one, like, well, like, they made fun of the Draken and Shigo shipping names. They usually don't do that. They usually, like, do King- Kigo or, or whatever. That's usually more popular or something, but I'm just like, oh, okay, she goes... I mean, she basically dodged it a little bit, and she basically waited on bad shipping names, and I'm just like, but still, like, and I, I also find it funny that um, Ron, of all people, like, was aware of that, unless, like, Kim told him or something like that, because all of the, 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 the hints in the last episode, like, Kim was there, well, I guess he was there for that awkward hug where they almost hug, but then they don't hug because it's awkward, and they're just like... Draken and Shigo, it's like Kim and Ron shipping, but just more awkward, and I eat up the awkwardness. It's great. But, um, yeah, anyway, so, It's like looking know, in a mirror. It's like, you know, yeah, Kim and Ron are just, you know, reverse shadow antagonists of shadow characters of Draken and Shigo. Kind of not really. It's I think they're more complicated than that, but... Oh, I thought, I thought it was more of a mirror on your life, just being awkward. Oh, yeah, well, thanks, thanks, Riddle. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> Good co-host. Yes, <laughs> I'm it, here for the support. Is it is it too late to fire you from this this non-paying podcast <laughs> job? Turn in your badge. Turn in your podcaster badge. Anyway, um, so um, it was really cute, and I liked it. And the other thing I really liked about it is like um, near the end, everyone like runs. Oh, okay. Thank you, Toby. Um, Toby shook in the background. Thank when... you, thank you, Toby. Um, Toby's my dog if you're if you're new but anyway um every like so Ron starts off with like Bueno Nacho has this new thing and Kim's like oh Ron and then like Ron's like hey we did the thing let's go to Bueno Nacho and Drac he's like you want to go to Bueno Nacho Draken and Draken's like that sounds neat so like I I like the the idea of like all of them being friends eventually through enough character development and through enough like what do we do with Draken now now that Draken saved the world and stuff and you know I can talk forever about you know 
what I think, what my opinions as far as that are, but, you know, whatever. Would you like to hear my opinions, Riddle? Everyone would like to hear your opinions. Okay, so my opinions are that, um... Damn it, now I, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, so my, my opinions Let's are... Let's it afterwards. Yeah, he had, he, he's got little fanboys for his pod, for Draken's podcast called The Blue Boys, and it's called Yapping with Track. Anyway, it's just, it's just super cute. Um, Can and, I join? I'm orange, though. You're orange, though? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta dye yourself blue, da 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 Okay, I'm blue. You're blue, you're blue now. Okay, give me a second, I'm gonna let Toby out. Okay. I guess we're cutting this section out, editor. So Toby, what Toby will do is, um, Toby will go out, and then he's, and then he'll realize, no, and then he'll realize I'm not going with him, and then he'll come back in. So editor, no, you know, cut this, and he'll probably come back in, and you'll hear noise. But anyway, um, so as far as that, I always pictured like Draken because I talked about this in a video, but because Draken's ambition for being evil, um, in rewriting history was uncanonized by that episode like that motivation isn't real so you know cut so that would mean his motivation for saving for doing all the evil and stuff like that um his motive as it were is for you know respect of his colleagues and to show people he is accomplished and a good smart man and a scientist and that kind of has you kind of get those vibes in the the cowboy episode which is called showdown at the crooked d in case you want to watch it later know all the names of the episodes um because right. of course i do um so anyway so you know once he saved the world he got that so i'm just like so i figured he would join global justice which is like the big like james bond major spy pro place and he then does a grew. he does a grew essentially and then like, she has to go along because they're dating now, and he's like, oh, sh fucking sure, but she has a harder time fitting in, and she, like, does minor crime until, like, he, you know, she kind of is like, eh, maybe that's not worth it, or maybe it's not worth it, and, you know, kind of in a progression of time. Um, and then, you know, Draken would do kind of things where he'd, like, fuck up and, you know, or maybe he'd sidetrack, or he'd, like... I'm going to do an evil scheme just to make my girlfriend happy because that's probably happy Valentine's Day. And Kim's like, but you're going to get gonna get fired from your new job that you're like. And he's like, ah, da, da, da. so, you know, plots like that. Anyway, hire me, Disney. It was, it's good. So hire me, hire me. So anyway, I really liked it. And you guys can listen to it if you want to. It's um, it's on YouTube and it's I, I assume it's on podcast places as well. But I don't know. I haven't checked. Um. But anyway, so Christy has a podcast, and we have a podcast, and Draken has a podcast, and everyone has a podcast now. It was great. Hello. See, he came back. Welcome back. Welcome back, Toby. Time for the Toby interview. Hello, Toby. Um, and yeah, Toby's kind of, um, speaking of Toby, Toby, hello, Toby. He's, he's going up to the microphone right now. You, he, he wants to be held. Uh, okay. Like, doing the essential, like, uppy child thing. But anyway, um... Toby is kind of um, doing. Sir, he's kind of my service dog. He can calm my. Um, he can calm my flashbacks and break them up and stuff like that, which is a nice skill that he has. So usually, if I do conventions, um, any upcoming conventions for the fall and and next year, um, Toby will probably be with me. So um, he is very shy, so he probably won't let you pet him. But if you just ask me, I'll hold him, and then he'll let you pet him. But he's not like a social. He's not as social as I would like him to be, but hopefully yeah. with more conventions, he would he will become more social. But he's a little, yeah. he's a Jack Russell. Um, thank you, Toby. Get, okay, we're going to put you down. Um, yep. The bonus a, of Toby is to, Toby is dog and dog is cute. Yeah, doggy is cute. He's a Jack Russell carrier slash copper spaniel mix. So he's a, he's, a, he's basically a wishbone dog, but he's just a long, he's just a long boy. So he. That's kind of the, how his body looks, but he's also just a mutt, so that he's a rescue dog. So I'm not a we're not a hundred percent sure, but that's what I was told. So I'm just gonna go, go kind of go with it. He also has fluffy. Toby's, to go Toby's got a little bit of a cat syndrome. You don't know what breed it is exactly. Yeah, it's, it's dog. It's dog, but yeah, his ears are a little bit more fluffy, and which is a copper spaniel trait. 
Um, and I was going with Copper Spaniel because they don't shed, and also Lady was Copper Spaniel, and my parents wouldn't let me get a Dalmatian, so this is that was what I had to go with. But anyway, Toby worked out. I wanted a, a recognizable breed, too, and, you know, Jack Russells are pretty recognizable, so, like, my dog Skip was Jack Russell Terrier, and, yeah, Wishbone's probably the most famous Jack Russell Terrier. Anyway, so... We have cats here. We don't know what breeds they are. They're just chunky cats. What, what kind, tell tell the, the, the world about your cats. Oh, yes. We have two cats. They were not originally our cats. They were my stepmother's friend's cats. Oh, tell them about the pizza. The pizza. Oh, it's a good story. Yes. The previous owner was not a very good cat mom, and she would go on trips. She would go on trips for a long, long time. And instead of putting, like, when you go on trips, when you have pets, either you have someone watch them, or they go to someone's house, or you put them in a kennel for a little bit, a little, little, like a little pet hotel kind of deal um this this person would not do that and she instead would call domino's pizza and say hey domino's pizza man the door is unlocked deliver this pizza to our house open the door and leave the pizza open and then the cats would then eat the the pizza so when we got the cats they were overweight and we needed to slim them down before they turn into just 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 Reddit chunks, basically, just very, very large animals. And they, um, they, they have, they, they smell, right? Because they're on the pizza they, diet. They smell bad. Yeah, they had a pizza diet for the long, longest time. So their, their intestines have changed to that, to be like humans. And so they smell awful all the time. And it was, it, even though the diet's changed, we've tried to make them healthy. They, they're, they're just stinky animals and we hold them and they're, they're cute. And then they, they, they. They stink. Toby, well, at least Toby, you're not stinky. Yet. Yes. Yet. Right, Toby? Toby's not stinky. Okay, go, 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 go put down. Toby, I have like five treats that I gave you before this so you could be entertained. I'm not... Well, More anyway. treats. More, More treats. treats. Okay, why don't, we, why don't we move on to the news? So if you've listened to all that ramble, congrats, we're going to move on to the news. So um, give me a second, Riddle. I'm going to go get a new soda. Um... Mine is almost okay. Out. Okay. Good idea. I guess we're cutting this uh, section out too. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna cut this out. I'll, I'll also put him outside, but um, he'll bark. So if I notice he'll bark, then I'll re-record as as needed because he's he's gonna make it hard to to finish this. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, so um, do you want to lead the stories riddle, or do you want me to introduce them, or how do you how do you want? Um, I don't think we're going very in depth with all these topics. They're just things that are going on. So I guess I will lead on to them. Okay. All right. You lead. Uh, all right. Three, two, one. Okay, and on to the news. So what happened this week in the world of animation? Let's see, Networks, let's see, sorry, Netflix um, released another trail called, from from the, the movie Sea Beasts. Um, this came out a while ago, um, I, there was some buzz about it earlier, um, it got, I think it's pretty good. Uh, have you seen the Sea Beasts um, trailer? 
Um, I have not. I just know that Netflix, like, cut down all of its animation production, like, relatively recently because they're like, oh, we're not, make- we're not making enough ne- money. And I'm just like. Yep. Nef- Netflix is definitely mired in its own series of drama. But what comes out of it, I think I enjoy. Like, Sea Beast, like, they're, they're produced by the same people who did, like, Moana. Oh, okay. Um, so they got some they got some Disney roots in there. And My I, favorite I, I enjoy, yeah, I enjoy like new IPs that are trying to go out there and be something different. Um, uh, last night, in fact, I saw like the the Love, Death, and Robots with my, with my boomer parents, and they enjoyed it too. Um, have you seen the Love, Death, and Robots kind of series? They're just like a series of anthologies. And just, I have not, just but like keep in mind, Michaela is the first person in a while that will sit down and watch animation with me. Like my parents are the kinds that will complain. And be like, oh, I don't want to watch animation. It's for kids. Oh, and yeah, like... yeah. My my parents will do the exact same thing. But like, I I think the this the Love, Death, and Robots series and the stuff that are coming out on Netflix, I think it can appeal to to the the people that are staunch in their their ways. Like, no, I don't want to watch animation. It's icky. Um, and I, like, I I especially enjoyed the the the, the rat section where there's 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 basically a this this old this old farmer and he wants to get rid of this population of rats. So he tries like different kinds of, 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 of things to get rid of them. And like the rats are actually sentient and it's, 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 it's kind of outrageous and, 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 and out there. I think it's all just, just a concept that someone had. And then they just went on to animate it. The, I, f- I feel like that this is just like a, like a, um, a round Robin of, of ideas. And mm-hmm. they just go, they just go on with these, these small little, ideas for like about seven minutes and then they they go on to the next one i i i enjoy that the the, the kind of like that kind of stuff i think there's like um claymation there's there's a claymation series that did the, a similar thing and i i particularly enjoy that um so yeah that's netflix um on the disney side there's there they there uh, there's a trailer today for strange worlds yeah i did um, see that i've like that's the first i've seen about it obviously because it's a teaser trailer for it so i have right. no idea we're not, gonna, yeah. we're not gonna get a lot of information coming out of there it's just a teaser trailer the only thing that i heard that was on the side of a little bit of drama is strange worlds are not it's not going to be releasing in theater in france um oh. why is not why it's not getting released in france you know why gay stuff no um it's the the streaming oh um, i was like I, these... I, I figured the french would be open to the gay stuff and they're not like china who are just like we're gonna no, boycott your movie because there's gay things in it so. no it's theater deals and how long they want things in theaters separated by the time that it hits streaming so in france they have deals that they want like streaming services to wait 14 months before a movie goes on a streaming service and obviously Disney doesn't want to do that so they're just going to skip theater altogether and they're just going to just put it on streaming whenever they decide to put it on streaming because they don't want to wait a year and two months is this like is this like a mandate by the government by the french government i think it's a union thing okay Um, i don't i haven't looked it up myself but i think it's a way to make sure theaters make money because people would rather stream it than than go to a theater because a theater is expensive and streaming is you're already paying for that yeah yeah i mean i feel like theaters i mean what's just gonna happen is i don't think the theaters will die out altogether unless they just start they, unless they just stop becoming a social event altogether but they'll definitely decline and yeah. i like the u.s is just like well sucks for you guys you know kind of thing yeah, theaters will be more of an event and not a way to consume yeah. media yeah It'll, it'll be it'll be like going to the theater like like an actual theater or or just like you know it, like something to do with your friends kind of thing that gets you out of the house and you know like whatever you know yeah uh, words I are totally hard agree. like i i think spielberg went on the a rant like a couple of years ago that he's just like you know the theater isn't gonna die and theater's the best way to consume and i'm just like i'm sorry steven spielberg but i i hate to call no. you a boomer but like you know There's it's too just... many people it's loud it's 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 not the optimal way to consume things i'd rather be at home in my in my my shorts and just hanging out on the couch and eating the popcorn and i can pause i can pause the theater mm-hmm. i can pause what i'm consuming and and come back to it later yeah and i know? I think, I mean, ultimately, I think streaming is more beneficial because, like, what we just talked about, you get access to things that weren't made 
like later on in the yeah in the in the decades or whatever and it's not so much about like what's new it's just like what specifically you like and then you know disney is doing i it's mean it's not going back it's not going back in the vault you remember vhs oh yeah the disney, disney vaults yep get it for a limited time it's the way to produce scarcity and yeah. so you would you're you want to buy it and like oh no i want to want to i want to buy this version of the lion king even though i own the lion king because it added um, the stupid I, fucking I, song right the, the, the morning report <laughs> yeah song that no one wanted <laughs> They they actually removed the morning report song from the Disney Plus cut. By the way, good, <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I agree. You you, you learned. <laughs> you you had one job and you learned the job. So like even like um, something that's relatively you know something to notice about that is we talked about like gargoyles and Kim Possible, but even things like they're they've made the 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 regular Esmeralda doll and the regular Meg doll that are not like, you don't have to go to eBay to find that stuff anymore because people are, people are, it's just more easily, it's just easier to find and consume. And then, you know, if you want a Hercules theme party, it doesn't have to be in 1999 when they marketed Hercules stuff. You can go on Amazon and get all your Hercules stuff. And I, I fucking love that so much. Like I, you know, part of me just wishes I grew up in like the streaming era where I can just, you know, consume content no matter when it was made and not have to worry about when it's made and stuff like yeah. that so yeah things don't get it out even and the things that are evergreen that it's good for art like, riddle yeah <laughs> like there, there's always there was always like evergreen themes when it came to like party stuff like power rangers or mm-hmm. princesses and stuff stuff like that but sometimes you want to enjoy something different mm-hmm. valid all right what is what is the next news the next news, um, I guess Buzz Lightyear. Um, the, that the, another movie trailer came out a while ago, but it's it's coming out soon, uh, next month. Yeah, we haven't really rem- talked about Buzz Lightyear, and I think something we can do like too is if we if we feel like it, we yep. can st- we can we can consume the content and watch the content. So like we can consume, you know, Buzz Lightyear, and then have a podcast where we talk yep. about Buzz Lightyear. But anyway, I That's true. But, I go ahead. Oh, you go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, like, I think it's a really interesting concept. I like the idea of, so for people who don't know, basically they're making a movie of, like, a more streamlined, serious movie compared to the the 90s Buzz Lightyear TV show with uh, Patrick Warburton, which still exists. Um, But That was a big drama. Yeah, yeah, and I'm so surprised because I... My guess is is when it's ready to drop on Disney Plus, they'll also drop Buzz Lightyear, you know, on Disney Plus just to kind of have all your Buzz Lightyear content. But I I read an interview where the film director is just like like well, it's just different universes within universes. Like there, there's the mainstream like action movie, like there's the mainstream Beetlejuice movie, and then there's the Beetlejuice animated series, which is they're two separate things that. Andy and all of the people, in the, the the regular Toy Story canon are consuming. It's a different. It's a different story, basically. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fine. It can do its own story. Just I think people were expecting the the Star Command series, and then not getting that did 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 leave a little bit of a taste in their mouth because the initial teaser trailers I don't think conveyed whether or not it was going to be that or not until we got a little bit more information and then like oh it's just going to do its own thing and that's probably where you got the hibbing and hawing from yeah which i agree with i think they should have been more clear with the marketing and i think you know um buzz Lightyear was actually a bob and mark uh property um uh, before kim possible bob and mark did a lot of um i mean their primary thing kim possible was uh its own project but their primary thing before and, and after were taking IPs that were movies and turning them into TV shows. So they did the Her- Yeah, so they did the Hercules TV show, they did Buzz Lightyear and then post Kim Possible they did the They Pink- did Aladdin too. They did Well, they did this they did the sequel. They did the third quill for Aladdin, but I don't know if they were on the main series for Aladdin. I'd have to I'd have to check my sources as far as that. Okay. But yeah, so um yeah, they did uh, Bob and Mark did write Aladdin 3 Electric Glue 2. So um in case you care about that aladdin the king of thieves there you go words um but yeah they so they did the penguins of madagascar series post kim possible and then they did the kim the big hero six movie uh series post that so and now they're just kind of chilling in until something until the serialization of of movies is 
kind of a thing um i get i guess like they did that with like how to train your dragon for a little bit but... and i think i think that's a really i i mean i like these ideas it's basically like the similar thing of like exploring star wars canon except the extra steps essentially in in your suspension of disbelief but um or you have to think about it more about you know like what I'm watching a universe, a movie in Andy's universe from his movie, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I think I, I love those kind of creative ideas where, you know, right. they put they they really build the world that, you know, they build the world yeah. inside the world anyway. Yeah. But then, then you could always also have disappointments like um, like the Kung Fu Panda when they didn't um, cast Jack Black in the role of Poe. Yeah, I guess they just uh, they, they couldn't afford him. That, that 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 is reasonable. Yeah, well, I mean, like Jack Black's, Like the thing is with voice actors that you know are are popular in a, or actors that are popular in a certain era, and then they get cast for voiceover work because they're popular in a certain era, and then that that's it. Um, I'm just like, you're not doing anything else. Like Tim Allen isn't doing fucking anything else. Like except the Santa Claus movies every once in a while. Like it's not a matter. Tim Allen of, is it? Yeah, he's waiting to, to acquire more Oscars. Yeah, so, like, they're not... It's not a ma Like, Tim Allen, like, what else do you have to do? Like, fucking just, like... But, you know, I think, you know, mainstream people don't really respect the art form like that. Like, that's why I like Jodie Benson and, you know, the people who always come back no matter when Disney asks because they, you know, they value the character and, like, the the continuation of using their trademark on the character and... Rambly, Don't really rambly. The fans, like, yeah. like Mark Hamill. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't Mark Hamill's fault that you know, Last yeah. Jedi was Last Jedi. Last Jedi was. I mean, like when it turns to like the voice acting, I think that's a. That's a big driving force for some of these people is they don't want to 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 make their fans upset. Yeah. And that's that's a legitimate thing. Yeah. Um. So. Because you do see these backlashes, and then. And then, like, oh, yeah, it's an okay series, but he wasn't there, so... Yeah, uh... you know, like, even just do it for, like, that, and, you know, but then it just be comes down to, like, do these actors really want to work, or do they just want to sit on sit on their ass yeah. and collect the royalties for their popular stuff, so... Yeah, well, and they also just just don't want to... Maybe they just don't want to do it. Like, they're, they're, like, you do a role, and, like, okay, I'm done with it. Yeah, you know, so... But that's why I'm, like, educate your who you hire for, like, ideally for these these projects so they'll come back and disney usually has some clauses about that um and unless it's like a big get where people will just um they'll make sure don't use, that just it, don't use your voice after i'm dead that, that's that, that, that's i think we're i think we're, we're bleeding into that territory a little bit um I, yeah. we're a little side tangent but um if you guys are keeping up with obi-wan on disney plus which i am re watching religiously um, they did use yeah. fake Darth Vader uh, voice for Darth Vader uh, because they didn't want to deal with James Earl Jones, who can't act as um, as evidence in Lion King 2019. Yeah. He's so, getting old. You can hear it. Yeah. So they auto generated Darth Vader, which I think was the right call because I can't. You know, it it sounds like him. So that's that's good I... enough. I don't know what's more of a disservice though: auto generation or just replacing. Auto generation while the person's still alive. <laughs> Yeah, he's still alive too. So yeah, I I I think it would have been, I don't know. I guess if you can't find the voice, then I guess that is the only option you do have. But I'm sure there's someone out there that can do a Darth Vader voice. Yeah, but it's it, I guess it just depends. Like you know, I don't I don't know enough about Star Wars. I'm sure yeah. there there were people doing it in like the animated stuff, and I'm just sure they wanted to. I'm sure the the auto tune whatever that they did is probably a little bit closer than just someone. Yep. replicating automation him. automation's coming for for actors in animation and yeah it, you know animation it's, it's will just scary... get more automated till they won't have any animators well this is yeah, like a hundred like... years in the future but you know yeah this is this is the week of um, 6 12 um 2022 and speaking of ai and animation the, the, we can see on twitter like the funny meme of the dolly mini the like the ai that can blend two things oh yeah I, yeah that's it's, it's creepy but it's creepy it's uncanny but I think it's evident that AI is getting closer and closer and it might even replace people like me that just try to make funny memes like, oh, you just have an AI that can do that. No one will ever replace you, Riddle. Oh, no. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 
Let's see what else came out this week. Bob's Burgers didn't that come out this week? No, that didn't come out this week. That came out like three weeks ago. So um, oh, I am I am late on this. Yeah, well, it was just something to highlight because we didn't we haven't done an episode in a little bit. But um, if you haven't okay. seen the Bob's Burgers movie, um, you know I haven't because I don't have a car. But I will I will eventually. I mean I have a legitimate excuse for not seeing it. But anyway, um. You know, support 2D animation in movie theaters. You know, they apparently yep. they were working on the the movie for a while, um, from what I remember, as far as Bob's yep. Burgers. I things. enjoy. It's one of those adult animation series, but I enjoy this series because it's not mean. It is not cruel, like like a Family Guy or or a, or an American Dad. It is a much more wholesome, if I want to say. But yeah. it's, it's uncanny at the same time, and I think that's its charm. And it, it, go ahead. It's, it's 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 it is a type of humor that only certain people will be able to consume. But I think I enjoy this. It is it is it is up my alley. I think also too, like as far like South Park and Bob's Burgers are on tier as far as like South Park has changed a lot, but it's still consistent in its quality. And Bob's Burger, I, Bob's Burgers, I think has just kind of maintained itself. Like it's not serialized. And it, it gets a little messy with time zone or timelines because there's like Halloween episodes over like there's like three there's there's a lot of holiday episodes with yeah, Bob's it's, Burgers. It's, it's in this ten season. It's gonna happen. Yeah. It's a slice of, it's a slice of life anime for for us Americans. For us for us. <laughs> <laughs> Let me speak American for you. But yeah, I think it's one of the few things that has gone on that long and that has you know maintained you know consistent quality, which is not what a lot of things can say anymore um, as far as, you know, long form animation kind of thing. Like I imagine Bob's Burgers will end in the next like five years or so, but yeah, it's, it's also about burgers. So that appeals to my American ses- sensibilities. <laughs> yeah. But you know, even if you, I'm, I think it's a musical, right? It's a musical movie. Um, yes. I, yes. I, I believe so. Sorry. So, you know, I, I have not seen it either. You know, when we, when we get, you got some homework riddle. Oh, you got some homework, yeah. real. I, I dropped a thing. But what is... Oh, okay. I was like, what is Drop that? Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. But, um, yeah, so... Uh, if you, I'm sure if you haven't seen Bob's Burgers, then you will enjoy the movie if you have access yeah, to a car. I've, seen the, I've, I've definitely watched the series, and I enjoy the series. I, 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 I love the awkwardness and just the... The, the, it's very dry humor, mm-hmm. and I, I enjoy that. It, it, it's, it makes me exhale air in delight. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Um, yep. But I think it's doing decently box office-wise. Like, not crazy, but, you know, like... As long as it does better than Morbius, I'm happy. <laughs> the memes. Especially the second... <laughs> yep. As long as it does better than Morbius, I think I think we can make a, a case for animation being a real medium. Just beat Morbius. This, this you, those are your expectations. <laughs> yep. Those are my expectations of you, everyone. Um, yep. The, the, the last time you, you, you streamed, you did it, Morbius wasn't a thing yet, correct? Um, yeah. Oh, so you missed all the Morb memes. Do you want to explain that to the people? Uh, it's just just the word morb in everything. Yeah, it's it's a dead beam now. Stop stop saying morb, <laughs> please. It's dead. It's morbid let it, time. Let it rest. It's not. It's no longer morbid time. Let it die, please. <laughs> let it die. Um, You'll make the studio release it a third time. <laughs> do we want to talk about our our highlight um news thing? The, the Warner Brothers bad hot take. Oh yes. Well. It's Cartoon Network, but Cartoon Network is owned by Warner Brothers. Correct. And let's see, they released a tweet this week. Was said, it this week? Uh, yep, it was this week. Okay. This is all, yep. On live action content, semicolon, girls often graduate out of animation. Some of our most incredible competitors have been on, has been at the live action game for a long time. We know it's what girls want. Um so I think this it's, comes yeah. out this comes out of like executives talking about the future of Cartoon Network and I think they're trying to re-implement li- re-implement live action shows again yes. which I think is Yeah, they're they're, they're bad. definitely fishing for an excuse for it and yeah. it's very it's a very very bad take. Yeah, so because, well, go ahead. Like you want to get into animation and you don't want people to say that oh girls aren't interested in animation, correct? Well, yeah, I mean 
Well, be, well, I'm trying to give some backlog a little bit before that, but um, you know, from a production standpoint, I think what's happening is just like, oh, animation or live action cheaper to make, like, why, like, why we yes. spend all this money? Oh yeah, definitely live action cheaper. But to make, like, yes. Twitter kind of exploded because you know, there's like something that not a lot of people know is the industry itself is slowly turning more female dominant dominated anyway, like you know. Um, it's it's a slow process, but there is a hi- there's like f- there's a higher percentage of girls in animation going to school for animation than men now, and why right. historically that has happened is you know they wouldn't let women do the the keyframes and the the important animation they would let and an- they would let the women do the coloring of the cell frames post you know animation and stuff like that so. You know, it's it's a, it was a gender thing, but now that it's not a gender thing, you know, girls are naturally more empathetic, and I think that's why they've absorbed more of media than that. I mean, you're a guy riddle. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think generally is that is that fair to say? You know, um, I I I guess um when it comes to uh, I guess there's a stereotype that girls don't want to be in animation, but even though you. The more girls are actually going to to, to school now. Yeah. So yeah, for 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 animation. So this this is ridiculous. This is just some hoity toity old geezer trying to speak out of his out of his high knee. Yeah, I I mean I think it was a a woman that said it. I think it was just a really, oh really. Yeah, I think it was just a really bad take. But like there are so many people that tw- that that ch- chimed in and said like, you know, not only I'm like I'm a woman and I'm in this industry, but also like you know, a sentiment to the My Little Pony stuff, like, you know, that has been popular with everyone, not include like, you know, not including little girls. And then also, you know, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of cartoons that are made for girls, like, in a high school era. And, like, that's why a lot of girls, if they want to continue to consume the animes, or they cut that, if they want to continue to consume animation, they have to move to anime because Western media isn't making any, you know, adolescent to high school age content no for this. Faces. No more brace face. Bring... Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they need to bring back brace. Oh no. <laughs> anyway, brace face, but less weird. Yeah, uh, I haven't I haven't watched brace face in a while, but I just just know there's some memes that are that are sus and kind of like had some awkward yep. takes from what i remember yeah. um we got the proud we got the proud family yeah proud well, i mean proud family was still that, kind of like gray area like kim possible yeah, even it's, it's a fam it's it's family or yes what, but, like kim yeah. possible itself was still targeted to two children even though it was about a teenager and like right. you know i think kim possible like the issue like kim possible didn't have a lot of like real teenager know, like, things like you know like the yeah. uh, friends yeah. kind of like talking about sex and talking about that kind of i mean i know it's disney but still like a more mature kind of take you know yeah but like you, you can have a series even not even about teenagers and have it appeal to teenagers like avatar the last airbender i think was very popular it's still very with, popular yeah. yeah they're making with, more with, stuff for that yeah with with everyone but i think like growing up i i just everyone in high school knew in, in middle school knew about it and stuff and talked about it so it really appealed to that generation of people yeah so i think you know again it's i mean obviously this has been talked about to death and like i'm sure they'll i'm sure cartoon network will release an apology sh- shortly if, if, and um, unless they haven't yet and we haven't noticed which you know is possible but you know it's also like a self-fulfilling prophecy prophecy too that like oh you know we won't make no girls animation Oh, why don't we have girls animation? What the hell? Yeah, you know, and I think, you know, like, society-wise, girls are still kind of pushing themselves and getting more education and putting the, hopefully putting themselves in positions where they are, you know, have bigger creative voice and roles, because I think, you know, people expect girls to not be, um, in bit, like, incredibly ambitious like even the animation girls are just like oh i just want to be a storyboard artist and then i'm just like i want to be a showrunner guys i'm gonna die so you know and i think a lot of times that's why um you know sometimes we want to just draw the in-betweens okay yes sometimes we just want to <laughs> sometimes we just want to do the coloring 
you know yeah. um so i i i can't imagine what kind of how like historically that would change if girls were more allowed to be regular animators um if they you know back in the day and not just the men but you know the men were true artists i guess true draftsmen or what what yeah. whatever question who gets to do the lip syncing <laughs> that's the worst the person who lost the bet or, or oh, pulled no. the pull, pulled the worst straw but you know who, who... Whoever's stuck doing that, that is the worst job in animation, I think, is lip syncing and just doing all the, just, just making it believable. It is, it is, it is, it is a tough job. I do not envy anyone that does that. Yeah, it's not, so, I, it's not so bad ref, with reference, but it's still not ideal, um, especially if, like, you oh. know, you know, just, just in general, but anyway, whatever. Yeah, we're rambling. We're rambling. We're rambling. It's a <laughs> podcast. You ramble. So, like, yep. you know, anyway, so I think if you have kind of things like, you know, kind of like Kim Possible or even the Tangled series, which I think was fantastic, and I'm hoping that time will be kind to it as far as dating it and people discovering it and people realizing, oh, this is, like, as good as the movie or even better than the movie because the Tangled series did all, checked all the boxes as far as things that you're supposed to do if you have a series where you can develop pre-existing characters more. It's a waiting time, it's a waiting time bomb, don't worry. Yeah, so, you know, good job Chris, who's been on the show before, who was the showrunner for that one, he's, he's, he's a neat, he's a neat guy, but, um, that was an early episode, if you want to listen to that, um, earlier on in the, the, the podcast, but, um, yeah, you know, well, it, it People are just dumb, but I think it's hard to because when it's like when there's it... just so much media out there, how do you expect everyone to watch everything? Yeah, it is, that is, it is like everyone's getting drowned out by everyone else, and there's only so many hours in the day you can listen to things and listen and watch things. It, I can understand where the, how good series can get overshadowed by just mediocre stuff and timing like i if if i'm sure tangled the series would have done much better if it was released post post the disney plus error but you know it was a disney channel thing and it was kind of mature for disney channel like tonally so i can i can see why it was a kind of a hard kind of a hard thing to market but you know right shrug sigh um well i think we're out of the news right any other comments you want to say about any of the stories no i think that does it Okay, so I guess, um, well, thanks for listening to the our rambles, everyone. So what we're trying Thank to thank you for coming. Like comments, no. Um, if so, we're gonna try to get back into um the 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 weekly format um as far as this podcast. So you know, if you're new, then uh, that would be Wednesdays um is when we release new episodes. So they'll kind of teeter between having a guest and not having a guest. So I have some things set up, but nothing is like confirmed. I never like to announce like this early on because people are people and, you know, things can happen and I don't want anyone's hopes to get up as far as like, you know, someone that might be interesting to talk to, but, right. uh, you know, but we'll at least um, cover animation news and cover things that are happening. So I guess, I guess that means we got to go figure out how to see Lightyear somehow, Riddle, um, and talk about that. But um, we will we will find it through a Chinese cinema. Yeah, you know it'll be great. And then speak also a, a light the year thing. Disney just released a little like mini documentary about like the history of the light year and leading into the movie and stuff like that. So people, I think it's to help people to understand the in universe thing. Yeah, so you have homework. Well, there, there's plenty. There's there's a couple good Disney docs on the Disney doc about uh, the parks and Howard Ashman and you know well this is for another time. So. Um, you know, so if you're, anyway, if you're new, we upload on Wednesdays, on um, Wednesday mornings on the podcast feed, and then, uh, Wednesdays afternoons, if you care about, um, if you'd rather consume it on the, on YouTube, and for some reason, I mean, no, no, no judgment, but that's just, that's just how we do it, because we gotta, we have fancy art graphics for the YouTube thing, we don't just be like, here's the logo, fuck you guys, we, we, I try really hard, like, across the board to make sure we have really good production value so we can impress people. Uh, I'm very proud of our editors. I'm very proud of, like, the team in general. And then, you know, like, this this Lion King thing is is, good, is so... Just take it forever, but uh, it's because I wanted to make sure it, it looks good so people are like, wow, 
some YouTuber named I Love Kim Possible Lot made this hour-long Lion King documentary with the original staff from the lot. What? You know, it like that's kind of the action, the reaction I want to get because, you know, pe for people who have never been introduced to the channel and stuff like that. But anyway, so you know, if you're yep, we'll just need we'll just need Adam to give it a thumbs up from your movie sucks. Yeah, I mean, the, then you'll get a funny, views. funny, funny enough. I actually contacted Adam to be in the video, and then he was just like. Oh, I I can't because I'm working on mine and I'm getting my ass kicked. And then I watched his, and then he talked about how he got tendonitis from working on his, and you know, yes. and I'm just like, oh wow, he wasn't kidding. So, but yeah, I did contact Adam, and you know, he he seems like a when cool guy. Own, when your own your your own voice acting and editing and and script writing, yeah, it is it is tiresome. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really glad I have my format where I can kind of outsource things so I can focus on the writing part and the the you know and the the mainstream running running a business but not really a business kind of vibe to it but um yeah so riddle will be new co-host so um i'm really excited about uh, that i think he'll be a good i believe in you riddle that's why you've been chosen so i am the chosen boy um so a couple of con con bookings before um before the end so in case you don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna look it up real quick so i get i have the information right in front of my face so um i am not going to ever free um i know a lot of people are asking me that and i apologize but it didn't work out um just because i thought i was going to be taking summer classes and then i'm not taking summer classes for um family things that are happening that are outside my control i i wanted to take summer classes to, to be back right. in LA. But anyway, so I will, I'm taking fall classes. So I was like, Hey, Wait, you're, you're, you're going back to LA. I mean, not, I mean, that's the end goal, but nothing's on paper yet. <laughs> I believe in you. I believe, I, I, I believe in me too, but thank you. Thank you, Riddle. But anyway, um, <sighs> so anyway, um, then I, so I emailed, so I got that information like last week that I wasn't able to take summer classes. Then I emailed Everfree and I was like, hey guys, I, I, I can go to your con event now because I'm trying to only do one con a month while I'm in school because if I do any more, I think I'm just going to um, overextend myself. So anyway, I had my one con, my, I had my one con for August um, and that was going to be it. And then you know, now I don't. So I was like, hey, I'm not going to school in August, guys. I can be booked for more than one con. And they were just like, oh, sorry, our guest list is already finalized. And I'm like, oh, that's that's valid. Uh, so anyway, I'm not going to Everfree. Maybe next year. But, you know, I still love Everfree, obviously. It just, you know, timing didn't work out. So it's, it's fine. But anyway, a convention I am going to is called Delta H Con. Um, it's a anime convention in Houston, Texas. Um, so you can look it up. So Delta, like the plane, and then HCon. Um, it's from August 19th to the 21st in Houston, Texas. Let me pull up the web, or let me pull up the the hotel. Um, so I have, so you, I, I have it, and I said it. Um, right. The Houston Marriott West Chase. So wherever it's in Houston. So anyway, I if if you're in Houston area, or if you're interested, I would just. Go look on the website, and it'll have all the information and tickets and stuff like that. So anyway, and Riddle will be with me, um, yes. right, Riddle? And then and Toby will also be with me. So if you want to ignore us and get selfies with Toby, that's 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 fine. I I won't I won't hate you for that. They have good breakfast burritos in Houston. Okay, well you 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 lived in Houston, right? I lived in Corpus Christi. It's not Houston, but. They they have these gas stations called Valeros. I remember back in the day. Okay, you'll have to and... you'll have to teach me the Houstons. So yes. both Riddle and I. They would, they, would, they, would, they would have restaurants there. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, both Riddle and I will be at that one, and, and Toby will be at that one too. Um, and I try to get well. Anyway, uh, cut that part. I was gonna be like, I get that I get little bandanas for Toby based on the con, but it's not really important. Anyway, so um. Save the date for that one if you're in the area or if you want to fly to, to, to Houston to see us. So I don't know what the programming track will be like. And it's my first anime con, which will be 
exciting. So it might be some animation education and how animation works yep. and stuff like that, which is which is fine. But um, anime cons are like Jed cons. I think you'll be good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny because like my gen- some of the anime cons I'm emailing is just like, oh, I've I've watched your website or I've listened, I've watched your videos and. You're not really talking about anime. I'm just like, so I don't know how you're relevant to our con. I'm just like, well, is animation relevant to an anime con? Eh, I can, t- like... Sort of. <laughs> sort of. So, like... I, I, Kim Possible is is the best anime ever. Don't, don't at me. <laughs> don't at me, bro. Um, so I think, yeah, is is dumb, but that's why I'm just like, that's... But anyways. Have you ever have you ever listened to Hank the, of the Hill subs or dubs? <laughs> Are you a subber or a dubber for Hank of the Hill? Um, Hank of the Hill, Hank of the... not King of the Hill. <laughs> anyway, um, and then I'll, um, and then I'm also booked for a convention in October in Phoenix, Arizona. I haven't been officially announced for that one, so I'll give the deets when I am announced. But if you're in Phoenix, Arizona, around that time, then you know start looking around because I should be announced this week, and then Riddle will probably also be at that one too once I get the deets. So. You know. Maybe. I have only so much con time I can give this year because I had my little sister wedding, but oh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, we'll, we can talk about it later, but yeah, no worries. If, you know. So anyway, so those are the cons, and I will, if I get announced for any more, I'll let you, you know at, later on the podcast, I guess. But anyway, that's those, those are my cons. So if again, if you're new to the podcast, we upload on wednesdays um we have all the podcast social media at the kp podcast for tiktok for tiktoks and twitters and stuff like that so you know when we upload episodes and we have our episode highlights and then you know follow my social medias for all of my social things and if you're interested in the discord server it's in the about section of um the main channel if you want that but everything else is there too um like and retweet and i'll draw you a funny dog <laughs> Tell tell Riddle you listen. I'll do it. Tell Riddle. I'll do it. <laughs> tell Russell. Yeah. Tell Riddle you listen to the podcast, and we'll we'll fucking he'll. You have you have you have to say I Riddle told me to comment, R- and then I will I will give you a draw. We, we got we got to get that <laughs> engagement up somehow, yo. <laughs> yeah. So um, thanks. So welcome Riddle as new podcast host, and I hope you guys listen. You enjoyed our rambling, and we'll be talking about more animation news, and we'll have more guests as they get announced. We just had a guest for our last episode about animation editing in the industry, which I think is interesting if people care about that. She was super nice. Um, and I'm really excited about the future of the podcast. I'm glad we have it for an asset, and uh, Riddle is neat, so... Thank you guys Neat. for coming and see you next next week, right? Because we're back to the weekly schedule. Woo. Yes, cross our fingers. Knock on wood. Well, yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Animation Communication on YouTube, Spotify, or your favorite podcast provider. We are really hoping the show makes a difference in how people view animation as well as media as a whole, as well as giving and providing advice for people all over the world who like or want to join the animation and media industry. If you like what you heard, please remember to show support by giving a like, a follow, rating those five stars, as well as subscribing to our main I Love Kim Possible A Lot channel on YouTube and turn your notification on. New episodes of Animation Communication come out every Wednesday at 6 a.m. EST on podcasting platforms and 4 p.m. EST on YouTube. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at the KP Podcast for information about upcoming guests, episodes, and more, as well as our hosts, KP and Riddle, at I Love KP a Lot, and at Riddle Lightning on social media. I'm Kat, and thank you for being part of our community. See you next time on Animation Communication. <laughs> <laughs>